I think uh, the time is due right now. So um, uh, hello, everybody. Well, you know me now. My name is Yahya Ithawi. I'm a, I'm a consultant neonatologist and a research advocate. So we have a series of sessions about research. We started with uh, writing uh, or generating a question, then reading an article, then uh, calculating and sampling, then uh, do the methodology, consent form, REP uh, form, submission, uh, applying for a grant and and uh, uh, and so on and today we reach how to actually conduct study now this is the most difficult part of the study because it has it need not only research skills it need actually knowledge communication management research skills and it can go wrong easily and the most important is transparency, honesty. And when we say transparency and honesty, it should be documented on paper, not like by words. Maybe you will be very honest, but you don't may know how to make it on paper. And when you submit or you public, you uh, submit for publication, people actually can see. So uh, this session is, uh, uh, will we try to show you how to convince and how to familiarize your colleagues when you start uh, conducting a study because these people are the principal in the, if they don't like it, they can block it, uh, especially if they have access to it. How you advertise, who and how to call the study personnel, uh, how to recruit, how to enroll, how to carry the intervention, how to collect data to create status books, and uh, well, collecting data is repeated. How you do follow up, how you do master table. If you deter or there is an adverse event, how you can re report. Uh, what about how uh, and, and, and who and where to uh, find the data and patient safety committees. And uh, at the end, uh, vitally is uh, uh, the complaint uh, process and reporting system. So, um, now, convincing and familiarizing colleagues is, is very difficult job. Uh, so it's very challenging, especially if uh, your institute is not familiar with the research or that it's not a research friendly environment. And uh, to add on that, if you have a colleagues who or she, who uh, is not believing in research, or are or you not believing in your skills or not believing in your level of knowledge of conducting research. So you need lots of lectures, sessions, discussion, chit chat, uh, whatever the name to familiarize and introduce and convince your colleagues. The best that I found when to do that, it is bedside talk. So you go at bedside, you talk to your colleagues, this one, we, and this is the facts. This is what we want to find. This is uh, what we will do. What do you think? Any question, comment, and so on. Uh, you can use posters. I found it very, very important. If you had posters with a few words, colored, and then you can send emails. You can create groups and uh, post in the groups. You, on you, of course, you can do virtual uh, lessons, sessions, and chit chat. Uh, you can, you have to do lots of training if it's a new protocol or new procedures or new ideas. You need lots of training. People, when used to it, will never change. Very hard. They have may have um, a, 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 like a very um, a unfavorable reaction. So remember, training, retraining, training, and retraining and training is vital before you kick off your study. Um, dealing with op opposing colleagues are vital, convincing, showing them that you are receptive. You always, you can change the protocol in a bit and retake the REB consent or, 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 or approval is vital. Do not kick off if you have more than 20% objecting people because you are not able to recruit or you have to stop after a while or you're not able to collect the um, uh, known or, or, or uh, the uh, hub sample size. Um, you need to have a copy of 
Patient Safety Committee, Data Safety Committee, Complaint Process, and Adverse Event Informing Process. These copies can be in the nurse stations, at the uh, handover room, at the doctor room, at the uh, admission office, uh, whatever you think that people will access it. Yeah. Can, you, can you mute yourself, please? Okay, so keep copy of these in areas that you think it will be accessible to your colleagues, nurses, physicians, uh, other supporting staff, because anybody can interfere with the study, can say to the parent or to the patient or the subject, well, I've seen complication, don't do that. So it can drop or decrease uh, and plant your uh, uh, concentrating um, by um, more, you know, by considerable uh, figure. So how you do advertisement, please mute yourself. Um, so posters, posters and posters, vitals when you do advertisement for a study inside your organization. Remember to color it. Don't use a black uh, typing, okay? Black, uh, black printout will not work. Colored, I see, minimal word, big size will work very well. Make it short and to the point. You don't need to, uh, uh, list everything. You list the name, uh, the principal or the uh, contact person of the authorships, uh, the uh, the uh, arms, and other information, reporting, uh, and, and, and links, and phone numbers, and so on. Make it nice, make it hooks, make it portray, make it uh, bring attention. You can put pictures, and so on. And there are many companies that can do a good posters for you. And again, so you have to include who to call. And if you have more than one personnel recruiting and you have a schedules, you need to have a copy of the uh, of that and, and easily access. Because remember, if, if, you, if there is a person eligible for the study, even if you have an administration uh, approval, um, people might say, well, I'm not calling you inside themselves, why they should bother. Uh, it's vital in the advertisement to include the inclusion and exclusion criteria. And then with the, uh, you can note, put note that the protocol and other documents aren't, are available as a soft copy or as a hard copy in a certain place accessible. You can mention that in your poster. It is vital to put in the advertisement, the update sessions of the protocol, detour from the protocol, side effect, complications, and results. It's vital to present your result always. So when the study is going after one week, two weeks, you can present your result always, you update your colleague. You need to train people, not only physician, but nurses and other supporting staff, even receptions. They need to know of the study if you want a good recruitment. How to recruit? So first the recruitment starts, you receive a call or a notification in any way. Uh, there is a mistyping here. So you need always you and those call you, uh, you need to know the time from calling to the arrival, what is your expectation, okay? And especially if you're dealing with emergency recruitment, then these should be uh, within a realistic expectation. You need before you move that the patient is meeting the inclusion and preclude the exclusion criteria. It's vital because you can come in the, the night and then um, patient is unrecruitable. You need to prepare a copy of the consent form that the patient will sign you need to make sure that you have a photocopy available so you can give a print to the patient, print in the patient chart and you keep one copy, especially the last copy because most of the uh, journals, high caliber will ask sometimes copies, uh, random copies of, the, uh, of, of your study. 
when you go and talk to the patient, don't go directly. First, you should not be on service because if you're on service, patient might say no because they are scared or uncomfortable to say to their doctor no. So make sure that the person who's recruiting is not the service doctor. It's not only doctor can take consults, but nurses if they are very well trained. You should not go directly to the patient room. You should ask permission by another person from the patient to tell him that a study or a researcher want to speak with you about a study. So he or she will have a chance to say no because they might uh, feel uncomfortable telling you in face no. You need to make sure that the patient condition is major or he or she can give consent, whether the main patient or a surrogate like father and mother. Uh, of these is the age, the mental status, the emotional status, and uh, whether on medications or not, having pain or not, all these factors need to be considered to make sure that the uh, consenter is independent and can take informed consent. Copy of consent should be with the patient and remember the consenting process. Another one should be in the patient chart if you have hard copies. And if you have soft copies and allowed, you can upload it. If you don't have, you can put it at the nursing station, make a folder, a portfolio for the study and put it at the nursing station. You need to copy, keep a copy of the consent form with you. Now, if the patient is recruitable, but he or she denied the study, then you need to include it in the trial, in the book status so you can make sure you have the consent rate calculated at the end. You need to document the patient name, subject ID, recruitment acceptance status, enrollment status, study arm, gender, date of the study or date of the recruitment, and maybe date of the consent, date, birth date, and age in the uh, status book. If that happened, then you need to open the envelope or the concealment, whether it's a software or hardware, if the study is randomized. And that's what we call it in the consent or in the, in the uh, randomization process, revealment. Uh, there is mistyping, sorry. Again, make sure, although you take the consent, before you start the arm or before you did the intervention, make sure that the patient inclusion and exclusion criteria are uh, reviewed. You need to make sure that the patient recruited but not enrolled to document that. Documenting if the patient, again, a trial to calculate the consent rate. I think this is a repetition. If the patient is uh, not included and uh, uh, recruited but not enrolled, you need to make sure that, for example, you get the consent, but for some reason, the status change and he's not enrolled, you need to make sure that you get rid of the consent form. And again, even the in, uh, recruitment and enrollment process need to be uh, meet the uh, regulation, whether you're an institute or a state regulation of when and how to get rid of the data, that calls data safety. So now you need to know maybe the hard copy need to be shred very well. How to carry the intervention. You need to document that you are opening the envelope and document the intervention, which arm the patient will receive. Once you carry, the, carry out the intervention, collect the data, in a specific table, uh, collection table designated for that patient. Document if there is an adverse event, whether expected or unexpected. Document if it, during the uh, intervention or carrying the intervention, there is deter from the protocol, whether it's major or minor. And once that happened, decide if the REP should be informed of the deters and always update your colleagues and maybe the head of the department. 
transfer, the, once you finish, you can transfer the data from the patient table to the master table every recruitment, or you can keep it every week to transfer or every month, it depends. You need to keep two hard copies of the table of the patient and the master table. And if the data in a room, it should be guarded by two level keys. Keep soft copies and need to be guarded by two level passwords. Keep all materials in office. Never take soft or hard copy outside the institute. Not allowed. A significant breach of the patient confidentiality in case an accident happened to you in accident in I think sickness, sickness or admission or something, and it, this might expose the data to the patient. Always keep the record in the institute. How to collect data? If you recruit all your patient and then you enroll them and you collect the proposed sample size, the calculated sample size, transfer all the data to a master table. Inform the REP and your colleagues and your department and your institute of the last enrollment subject. The data can be collected in a software like Excel, Access, SAS, or SSPS. After you make the master table, you can uh, uh, do more than one tables, uh, uh, a baby table or a child table. And then according to your study methodology and your variables and type of your variables and number of your variables, you can decide or the system will decide to you what is the test need to be done if it is inferring study, if it is a randomization study, or if it is uh, interventional study or not just a descriptive study. If it's a uh, uh, descriptive study or it's infer study, either way, you need tables, figures, and graphs. Once you finish, you have to present your finding to your colleagues and peer friend before you writing the manuscript for advice and problem and discussion. Once you finish, please select the journal before you start to write your manuscript. And we'll have a lecture how to select a journal. Write your manuscript. Make sure of the appropriate selection. Be ready for editorial requirements before you go to peer review. Be ready for peer review comments. Most of them are very uh, um, harsh, difficult peer reviewer scholars. So some people maybe get emotional uh, when we discuss, but most of people in the Middle East that I saw uh, is um, very emotional about uh, criticism. Everybody wants to be appraised. And if you, and you can see that if you, go to, uh, uh, if you go to a conference and you start to criticize people for purpose of discussion and chit chat and scholarly discussion, everybody will do not like you. And actually you will start to be singled out and maybe you, they will not call you or, or, or invite you to a new conference because, but when you publish, that's different. You will find harshness, you will find difficulties, you will find denials, and you will find conflicts. So you have to be very ready and don't take it emotional. If you fail, then try another time. If you fail, you know. So you might be filing 10 times of submission until you get approval. And with each submission and denial, you will learn. Now the study status books are vital. You need both hard and soft copy of the status books. Start with the list number of approached patient. If the patient consent given, subject ID should be given. Declare if the patient enrollment or enrollment ID. Document randomized arm after you do the revealment. Declare if the patient received the arm. Date of enrollment, subject bio, age, gender, address, cell phone, and others. That's important for a status book. Follow up. Follow up your patient status, even if after you're collecting the data and you don't need them, it's vital. 
update your colleagues of the outcomes, very important, and update the patients and the subject and surrogate. Always go and visit them. You can call them by phone if you want. It's vital because that will encourage the population to be uh, think more about enrollment in research. Follow up adverse outcome, vital to do that. Master table, make sure to include all your study data in one table, all the data. Make sure to use, sorry, mistyping, a software that you are familiar with. Make sure that the table is typed in a way that make conducting the statistical test according to the study methodology. Sometime you might need to do a child tables, one or more before conducting the test. Ask for help to design your master table before you start conducting the study to prevent wrong data collection and ruin of your work. Make sure that you have two copies, hard copies and two soft copies of your table before you, because you might lose the data at any time. Patient safety committee. The committee should be at least of three professionals. Select different disciplines, physicians, pharmacists, nurses, administrations, and other. It is vital or it's very important, not vital, not, 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 not a must, to use another institutes for patient safety committee if the regulation accept or allow you. So you have to follow your facility regulation. The email, the phone number should be accessible to colleagues, subject, relatives, public, and RFP of the patient safety committee. Safety committee should have the power to stop the study. So the subject or the patient and the colleagues should have access to patient freely to patient safety committee. There should be no emotion or frustration from that patient safety committee. And there should be no frustration if the decision to stop, whether because of high harm or because of good benefit, because unethical to start to keep randomizing. Data safety committee should be at least three professionals, should be of different disciplines, physicians, pharmacists, nurses, administration, IT, and so on. It's better to be from another institute. However, you have to uh, be careful with your facility regulation. The email, the phone number, and the uh, 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 other contact should be accessible to colleagues, subject, and uh, relative, and also to the public. How the public, you can put it on the data or the trial registry like uh, uh, clinicaltrial.gov. The, again, the subject during consent process and colleagues should be familiarized with the access to the patient safety committee. Complaint process, make sure you have a complaint process. And please ask for complaint, ask people to complain. It's better than they complain to REP or the administration. It's way better to complain to you so you can change. It's vital to be very receptive of the complaint. And then again, the, uh, you need to make sure that the consenting during consent process, the subject or his or her surrogate have uh, access to the complaint process. And this complaint process should be local to, your, uh, to the investigators or site investigator, to health regulation agency and to the ethic board. If you're doing interventional trial, then make sure it's registered on one of the clinical trial registration website. The link should be recorded in a, the consent form, in the protocol, in the posters, and everywhere. Adverse event reporting, vitals. You have to prepare a very clear, simple, direct, uh, non-emotional pathway, pathway for colleagues to report adverse event, whether during the intervention or later on. And make sure this adverse event reporting process are connected to the ethic board. The more you are transparent and direct, 
the more you will be trustful in future research. Update the clinical trial website for any adverse event occurrence or changing or stopping or holding the recruitment process. If there is a study event and you are more than one researcher, always ask for a meeting. And of course, I was doing it all virtual. Right now, the virtual is very common because of Corona, but I was doing it virtual always. Update your patient and colleagues of that meeting. And you may also need to update the RAP. You need to update any adverse to the patient safety committee. And I think I'm done here. Um, and these are my references. People ask me about the references. That's where I took most of the, uh, and in addition to my experience. And, uh, um, and these are, are my, my lines. If you wanna, if you, wanna um, you can hold it on the, uh, on the record and then you can go and read if you want to um, uh, have more uh, uh, insight on a recruitment process. So I am done. I am going to uh, stop recording. And I'm gonna stop sharing. And I am happy to take questions.